there, guys. So there's been more than a little bit of confusion lately about the concept of probentoroids, so I'm going to try and clear some of it up. Um, I'm going to give you guys some of the theory behind them, uh, as well as what a uh, probend toroid path looks like, and uh, a step-by-step -step of how you can put one together with poi. So let's start with the concept. Now, usually when we spin flowers, our hands are going around in a circle, and based upon the direction that the poi is rotating around our hands, we can tell if it is going anti-spin, that is, it's going the opposite direction around that the hand is. If it is going uh, in-spin, that is, if it's going the same direction as the hand but faster than it, or if it is going in an extension, in which case it's going the same direction of the hand and uh, essentially at an equal speed with it, right? So when we talk about toroids, we're essentially talking about the movement of the poise plane rather than the poi itself, right? And this little DVD right here is going to be my little poi plane for the time being. Uh, and as a helpful visual aid, I've included little arrows on it. Now, clearly when we're rotating it around such that uh, it always has the same orientation pointed inwards, we would call that as being kind of the equivalent of an extension with normal flowers, right? Uh, we would call that a situation in which we have an iso bend that is um, basically the bend is locked in time with the hand such that if I have my poi going away from me right now and I turn around the circle, it's still going away from me, it's still going away from me, it's still going away from me, right? That never changes. Uh, when I'm going in an anti-bend kind of fashion, we see the poi occasionally change its direction relative to the middle of me. So right here it's going forwards, and if I were to anti-bend it over to this side, we would see that the poi is now coming towards me. If I were to anti-bend it again, you would see that the poi is going away from me. And if I were to anti-bend it again, once again, the poi is coming back at me. And finally, we come back to the point where the poi is going back away from me, right? Okay, so what about when we do probend? Well, when we're doing probend, we're creating a shape that's analogous to an in-spin flower. And uh, again, if you look at the direction of the poi in relation to yourself, right here the poi is going away from me. I do a single lobe, and now the poi is pointed back at me. I do another lobe, and we see that the poi is going away from me. Another lobe, and we see that the poi is coming back at me. And finally, we rotate back around to see the poi moving away from me in the center again, right? Okay, so that's all fine and dandy for theory, but what about how you actually put together a pattern like that? Well, um, I have prepared some handy dandy visual aids. Uh, being as how pipe cleaners seem to be the preferred way of uh, throwing around 3D poi paths for the time being, I'm gonna use those. So this right here is a model of a two beat weave, right? And um, it's really easy to identify because there's essentially two planes that are moving back and forth between, and there's a nice little cross point between them right there, yeah? So when we play around with anti-bend, of course, we are playing around in a place where the poi planes don't end here. They continue back around to meet up with the original plane, but, you know, they're going in the opposite direction. When we're talking about iso-bend, uh, we're talking about situations in which when uh, you're moving back in towards this cross point right here, rather than bending back to the point where you originally started at, you're going to bend away from it and thus create kind of another uh, two beat segment out here. So what exactly happens when you do pro bend? Well, in all the examples I've cited, you uh, kind of shift direction in a way that is kind of unexpected. When you do pro bend, is no different. Um, pro bend has some similarities to iso bend uh, in that it utilizes pieces of motion that you already have access to. But what happens is uh, rather than coming back around on the same plane like we would on the blue right here, what actually winds up happening is the bend goes away from this red piece right here. So it would actually curve back off like this. So you would wind up with this kind of shape where you repeat uh, kind of this down bulge, but whenever you go up, uh, there's another plane bend to essentially a neighboring plane, right? Um, I won't belabor you guys by putting a whole pattern together right now, but I will show you a complete pattern that I built earlier. Two things I want you to notice about this. Number one, 
it goes between two different planes uh, side by side. Number two, there are four places where it comes in and where it goes out. And essentially, anytime it's going in, it is switching between whether it's going to the forwards plane or the backwards plane. Uh, and of course, vice versa, right? So it's, it's a really, really funky pattern um, that is really challenging to make. But once you know the basics of how to put it together, uh, it's not that difficult. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Okay, so let's actually do a practical application of this and build up a, uh, a four-lobe pro-bend uh, out of these kind of 2B patterns right here. So let's start off by being in, say, buzzsaw going forwards and switch between that and a wall plane place where, to my eyes, it's looking like it's going uh, counterclockwise. It'll look like it's going clockwise to you guys. Let me show you this on the side. And you can see here how the cross point is kind of pointed away from me to the left, yeah? Cool. So once you're in that wall plane place here, you're going to go ahead then and switch between that wall plane place and spinning in a horizontal plane, where if you look down on it from above, you would also see it kind of looking like it was going counterclockwise, yeah? And then the uncomfortable one, or at least one of. You're going to switch between this horizontal place where it's running counterclockwise and kind of Wow, popping it up into uh, this, this feels like counterclockwise to me as well, but this place where um, you could either think of this as being a plane that goes behind your head, or you could think of it as, in a more uncomfortable way, being a plane that goes between your uh, head and your arm, like so. Either which way, it essentially creates a cross point that is pointed down away back behind you, yeah? Cool. So once we're in this horribly uncomfortable plane, we're going to go ahead and switch between it and a reverse buzz saw uh, above us, kind of at just above head level. When we're in that reverse buzz saw place, we're then going to switch over to doing a wall plane counterclockwise once again. And I'll show you that from the side. And when we're in that wall plane place, we're then going to switch between that and this horizontal place, where if you look down at it from above, it looks like it's going clockwise now. I'll show you that from the side here, or I guess the front. And from this horizontal place, you're going to drop it back into that weird plane that's kind of between your arm and your body like so. Show you that from the side. Actually, it'll be cleaner that way. Yeah, much better. And finally, we switch between this place where it's uh, counterclockwise, uh, kind of between your arm and your body, and that forwards <laughs> that forwards buzzsaw place that we started the whole thing at, like so. And again, I'll show you that from the side. Cool. So the idea then is, is that if you switch between each of these positions in such a way that you only really complete one half of each of those two beats, congratulations, you are now doing a four-lobe pro-bend toroid. Um, just like with anti-bend toroids, um, if there are an even number of lobes, the pattern will return to the same direction where you started it from. If there are an odd number of lobes, it's going to switch directions by the time you get back to your hand's original position. And you're going to have to go through the whole thing again to get it in reverse direction. So uh, I hope this is helpful and clear some stuff up for some of you guys. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great week. Peace.